at the Plains Art Museum, Creativity Among Native American Artists is the initiative, what's, what it's called. We received funding for this initiative in 2014, and um, this is going on to the fifth year, or no, it is the fifth year, we're going on to the sixth year. And um, we've provided opportunities for Native American artists. We've had workshops with Native artist teachers. We've had um, artists in residence here, and they've had workshops with the, with the community. We had a Creative Voices uh, series where we feature artists that are being exhibited in a lot of, in most of the cases, and, um, and a film series. There's over 500 different recognized tribes, all with their own um, culture, stories, art forms. Um, Native artists all along have been, you know, exploring different venues. We had an exhibit with um, Buffalo in the American Living Room and featuring Fritz Shoulder. It was, you know, opened on his 80th birthday. But talking a little, we did discuss like a, a general history where um, some Native artists tried to break out of those stereotypes. So we showed kind of the progression since like the 40s, 30s, 40s, where that, that was happening. And um, it also included a lot of contemporary artists that are working in the, in the field today, like Jim Denemy, Diane Whitehawk, Henry Payer, Michael Tubles. There's, there's a huge list, but, and we had quite a few. There's still kind of that tendency for people to say, well, they want some Native art. There's an artist named Chinupa Hanska Luger that actually did a project where he made these huge boom boxes <laughs> and out of ceramic. And he, he did kind of a performance where he, he threw them on the ground and busted them because he was trying to break the stereotype. But I really am glad to see that this is happening it, in the Midwest especially because it's, you know, really been kind of a isolated island and people just didn't seem to be aware of a lot of amazing work and artists, Native artists that are in the area. Except Minneapolis. Minneapolis has been doing pretty well um, exhibiting Native work and others are too, but um, we've had a Native American art festival we had arts, arts and crafts, fine arts and crafts festival, and then we started collaborating with the Fargo Public Library and included an education series. Um, we do a lot of outreach, going out into a lot of rural communities and letting um, artists there know that we're here and you know that we have opportunities that are available. And anytime I hear something, of, you know, that's um, you know like a show, an exhibit, or um, residency, or whatever. I try to share that with uh, Native American artists that we have on our, um, in our directory. We created a de directory, and, um, and it's being added to, added to um, as we go along, and we hope to include more, of course. Um, also, we have a directory of um, you know, Native American um, institutions, museums, or um, schools, or people that we network with, including um, a large network of the people that funded us originally. You know, our exhibits have all been really wonderful. Um, it's hard to say. I've met so many wonderful, um, amazing, talented people everywhere. You know, there was a certain expectation that we work on certain goals and um, we, we report on all the activities and have documentation and, um, and send that information um, what's on a, what's called the dashboard. Native history um, is not taught in the schools as much as it should be. There's, there of course are um, it, you know, there is more happening now, but um, I mean, I can remember I learned about Columbus and uh, Thanksgiving, <laughs> and um, mostly what I knew 
growing up is what I saw on TV, which was all a farce. So, I mean, a lot of people, it's like they don't know what they don't know, and they, they really appreciate learning and, and um, talking to these artists and um, seeing what's behind their work. And um, I just think that's it's an important thing for everyone. Well, I'm a practicing artist, um, also an art educator and an art advocate, and today I'm an art administrator. <laughs> um, my work reflects, you know, like my family for the most part and, you know, issues, and it's like I really wanted to know more history, and my mother would say, you know, well, go look in a book because I don't know anything. I don't know, it just seems like everything that I've, that I do, besides making art, is a part of my art making. Currently, I'm the director of the Native American programs, and this is a great job. And I, I like all the people that I work with, and um, I have um, like what I do. But I, I am a practicing artist, and sometimes I just feel I'm, I'm around so many amazing artists and such incredible, amazing artwork. And, um, you know, I just feel really, it's really hard for me to, to fit time to make my own work in. And so um, I plan to retire at the end of the year, December, or maybe January. I don't know. <laughs> But yeah, I'm going to focus more on, you know, getting, um, applying for residencies and, um, and doing, doing work on my own, getting things. Uh, well, um, my name's Joel Ames. I'm the Associate Director here uh, for the Native American programs. I, I think you have uh, expectations of what something will be or what you think you know, and then you know, you walk into a position and you work with someone like Laura who has this vast knowledge and these relationships. Um, and pretty quick, you, you learn that there is so much more to a position or so much more to a program than I think what you conceived early on with, with it. I grew up in the reservation. Uh, you know, my dad was born in, um, during the, the, the Great Depression and so, he had heard a lot of the old stories and those were relayed to me as a kid so when I see a lot of, of, of artwork and ceremonies being not depicted but you know things within the artwork I can connect that with how I grew up and things that the stories that I were that I was told growing up yeah so um, I think in late January we received an invitation uh, from the Consulate General's office in Minneapolis um, of this this program that they were doing and uh, we you know, we, we flew to Ottawa, and from Ottawa we went to Winnipeg, and then to Vancouver. And there was a, approximately eight of us that were uh, on this tour. It, again, um, it was just an eye-opening experience. It was great to see uh, the, you see a lot of institutions sort of in sync with, I think, a, a larger effort, either sponsored by the government, uh, on the goodwill of trying to, I think, I won't say make amends because we're a long ways from that, but I think, they're, I think their intention is good and I think there's a larger effort um, up there. And so you see programming supported by not just single individuals or single funders, but by a larger group of people, a lot of money, um, trying to promote uh, First Nations art and culture in a way that was, um, again, on par with anything that we have here in the States. Same with Vancouver. Um, just a lot of effort, uh, a lot of, I think, well-intentioned people doing what they can to, um, I think in their eyes, right or wrong, um, but more so uh, honor uh, the First Nations people that are up there uh, in a way that, yeah, we just, we, we don't see as much down here as, as up there, at least at that level, the national level. And so, you know, in Ottawa, we went to a couple of different museums um, that had different focuses, but, I th but there was so much energy up there. Um, there, there was like, well, there was one collection that was more historical. So we saw a lot of historical um, 
I guess objects, you know, it, it's hard to, it's hard to put a, a word on it. I don't want to say artifacts because they are, they are items from our culture, you know, that if they were back home, they would still be revered and, and, and respected and maybe used in, in certain ways. Um, regardless, they are being, um, there's a custodial aspect to those right now that is, I think is very respectful. Um, then we went across the river to another museum where it was um, current artwork. There was uh, video pieces. Uh, very, I don't know, it was just very exciting to see all this effort and this respect being, being paid to artwork that I just haven't seen as much down here in the States. Now, you know, the, the Plains Art Museum, they have, they have a wonderful program um, that, that drew me into it and I, I hope to be a part of the efforts that have been here for years. Um, and there's a lot of museums in the area that are, are trying to um, they're trying to move forward with their efforts, you know. And, and I think there's a lot of good intention and a lot of good people working very hard to to make their programs work. But they're almost like little islands on themselves with with a thin network of like-minded people trying to make it work. You know, what what goes on here, um, I. I don't see duplicated at this level um, unless you travel more than 150 miles, 200 miles, you know, to Minneapolis. Um, I'm not sure where, where else in the Midwest, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I think it, it gives us a, a bar to, to reach. And of course, the last three, four, five years, um, there's been show after show that has gone up that has been most impressive. And with that same energy and that same um, intent. So uh, it's my intention to carry on the good work that's been going on here. Keep that energy um, to honor the artists that we are working with. Um, Native American art is, is really what, what Native Americans create. You know, um, it's, I, I, I learned long ago, it's not an Indian on a horse. Um, it's not defined by people in our galleries, you know, telling people what, what they're going to create and what they're going to accept, you know. Um, there's this famous story of, of Oscar Howe in the 1950s. He entered a competition, um, and at this point Oscar Howe had moved away from traditional imagery to more um, abstract. Um, he pushed back against the idea of cubism, defining what he did, but, you know, it was very geometrical, and he submitted it and they rejected his, his entry. Um, they said it's beautiful work, but it's not Indian enough. And he wrote them back saying, well, who are you to tell me what Indian art is? And for a 14 year old, um, that, was, that was a huge moment for me, you know, realizing that I don't have to draw, you know, what, what I'm told is what Indian art is. So, you know, as I've grown older, um, yeah, I am, I'm not going to say, you know, Indian art is, is going to be this or that, you know, it's not going to just be paintings on canvas, sculptures on stone, um, it's going to be whoever's coming up with work, whether it's new digital arts, you know, um, videography, uh, again, paintings or whatever it is, but it's whatever those individuals are creating, and I think that we need to respect their voice and their perspective and promote, to promote that. So otherwise we're not doing anyone a service, I feel.